I know I said I was going to like try and get back into the swing of things, like doing raw reviews and stuff, so thankfully I didn't have to work today, so it's good I've actually been able to do a raw review because I stayed up and watched it last night. It wasn't actually too bad. It wasn't as good as the episodes that I reviewed a couple weeks ago, but, um, you know, it, it wasn't as bad as Smackdown anyway, so... Maybe it's just, is it just me that's finding Smackdown bad? I mean, I didn't watch last week's one. I heard that it was good. But the two before that I actually did watch, I thought they were, like, really dull. But maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just weird. I don't know. But Raw started with um, Shawn Michaels came out, and he said that everybody thought that he was, like, crazy for putting his career online against Undertaker, and that, like, nobody believed in him. And he said that, yeah, when he's in the back of the locker room, like, people can't meet his eye or whatever. So he said that he was calling out anyone who didn't believe in him to come and tell him, like, straight to his face. And Triple H came out, and he was like, oh, you of all people, you know, you don't believe in me. And then um, Triple H said, no, I don't think you can beat the Undertaker. I know you can do it. And then he proceeded to go on and on saying how much he believes in HBK, which really could have been co- condensed down to, like, a couple minutes. But he just kept on and on talking, and I was just like, oh, stop now, seriously. So then he said that because he, he believed in Shawn Michaels so much that he'd reinvoke their um, rematch clause for like the the tag team title match and HBK said oh we're on different paths we can't do this now and he said yeah well right, WrestleMania is 20 I think it's like 27 days away or whatever it was so the and the tag team titles if you want it you didn't have to defend it and for like 30 days that was like the maximum time so he said oh they could you know he could win the match at WrestleMania and then defend the tag team titles the next night so HBK said okay so they um yeah that was going to be later in the night they were going to face Miz and Big Show for the tag team titles uh, match number one was Randy Orton versus Ted DiBiotti, and this match actually was quite good. DiBiotti's in control for quite a long time in the match, but then Orton, you know, regains momentum, and he goes, I think he's about, he's, like, preparing to go for the RKO, but then Cody Rhodes comes out, and he, like, gets in the ring, and Orton starts, like, attack, uh, Orton starts, yeah, attacking Rhodes, so the referee calls for the bell, so, yeah, DiBiotti gets, like, disqualified, and then Legacy, like, team up on Orton, but, uh, Orton fights back and knocks um, DDRC out of the ring, and then he goes to do the, like, DDT, the, yeah, DDT off the ropes on Rose, but DDRC manages to pull him out. Ugh, I'm getting really dumb guys with, like, all their names. It's terrible. And hopefully they'll do a match like that at the WrestleMania, but apparently next week on Raw, it's Orton versus Legacy in a handicap match. I thought it would have, like, saved that for, like, WrestleMania or something, but obviously not, so that was a nice match. The second match was a Money in the Bank qualifying match, and it was Jack Swagger versus Santino Morella. <laughs> yeah, it was obvious that Jack Swagger was going to win, and he won pretty much, like, right away. He won with a gut wrench powerbomb. And it's just... Ugh. I remember when Santino actually was, like, a decent wrestler. You know, he was, like, Intercontinental Champion, and he could actually have, like, matches that lasted, like, longer than, like, a minute. It's kind of like... I know, obviously, you know, he's, like, comical and stuff, and that's what he's for now, but it's kind of... You know, he just, like, jobs, basically, for, like, everybody. Cena came out and said he wanted to, you know, he was talking about what Batista did to him last week, and he wants to know why Batista did that. He said he understands that it was at uh, the Elimination Chamber, it was business, you know, he wanted the WWE title, but he said now that he's got it, he wanted to know why he did what he did. So um, Batista came out with a load of security guards, and he said that they, the security guards were there to protect Cena. He said he did what he did so that he could face John Cena at WrestleMania, and then Cena said, well, that's not an acceptable answer, and then he said it was basically because the two of them, they started their career pretty much at the same time, and they were like, you know, they progressed at the same level, they both won the championships at WrestleMania 21, but then it was Cena who the WWE took on and, like, promoted to be, like, the face of WWE, if you know what I mean, so he said that it should have been him, because he was the better star and not Cena. But Cena, Cena says that he, Batista is selfish and only obviously only cares about himself, which is why he, you know, isn't, like, the biggest star. And so Cena said that he's, you know, worked really hard for, like, the company and everything. And then Batista just says that Cena deep down knows that Batista's actually better than him. So, um, I don't know. I'm actually kind of, even though I'm obviously, you know, I can't stand Batista, but I actually thought that was quite a good, like, kind of, like, segment or whatever, like, build up. I think that they seem to be building WrestleMania up quite well. Obviously, like, they're building up, like, the Shawn Michaels and Undertaker thing like really well and obviously like this one they're building it up so obviously I haven't like seen Smackdown so I don't know what's happening with like the Cena um Cena yeah, with Jericho and Edge yet but um, I'm actually kind of quite looking forward to WrestleMania but I'm not going to like digress onto that because you know <laughs> I'm supposed to be talking about Raw then match number three was Zack Ryder versus MVP for in like another Money in the Bank qualifying match uh MVP won straight away he did the balling elbow and playmaker for the win seriously it's just it's, uh, sometimes when they do matches like that it's, you know, good, but when when people just lose in, like, straight
straight away and they're just like completely like jobbing to another person it's really like not interesting like you expect to see like a half decent match try and qualify to get into this match and then someone wins like straight away you just think oh really what is the point well, match number four was the divas pajama pillow fight Eve won that I you know can't be bothered to talk about that match there's not really anything to kind of like tell then they announced that the next person to get inducted into the Hall of Fame was Mad Dog Vachon. I don't actually know who that is. <laughs> As you can tell, I haven't been watching wrestling like exactly a very long time. Then after that, it was Bret Hart. Well, first of all, the oh, and that's a guy whose name's escaping my, like, like, you know, I can't think of what he's called now. He was said that it was Bret Hart was going to come out, but then Vince came out, and then he, like, introduced Bret Hart and said that he was going to, you know, do his farewell speech. Bret Hart said that he... Vince was obviously like you know lying. He hadn't really got him out for that reason. And Vince said, "Yeah, you're right. I, you know, like challenge. I heard you know you said that you were challenging me at WrestleMania. So come on, why don't you fight me?" And then Bret Hart was like, "Oh, I can't. I've got like a broken leg. I can't do it or whatever." And then um, Vince just said that Bret Hart was basically just like a coward. And then he like kicked like his uh, crutch away. So Bret Hart like fell down on the fell over like in the ring or whatever. And then Vince like left like walked away. And then Bret Hart got up and said that he accepted the challenge at WrestleMania, so that's obviously another match for WrestleMania, Brett and Vince. To be honest, I'm not really bothered about that. You know, I mean, I actually couldn't really... I honestly don't actually care. Obviously, a lot of people, maybe a lot of people who watched wrestling back around the time with the whole uh, Brett and Vince war thing, they might be more interested in it, but to me, it's just like, you know, I honestly couldn't care less. Then the main event was... DX versus the Big Show and Miz for the unified tag team titles. Yeah, HBK starts the match. She's getting dominated by Big Show and Miz for a while. Triple H comes in, does the face buster and spine buster on the Big Show, does the spine buster on Miz. Then Big Show hits a choke slam on Triple H, but then when the referee's not looking, Shawn Michaels does a super kick on Big Show. The HBK and Miz come back in. Um, HBK goes up top and does a diving elbow, and then he's preparing to do the sweet chin music on the Miz, but then, like, on the Titan Tron, Undertaker's face just appears on the screen there, so obviously HBK is, like, distracted. Then Undertaker does, like, the whole eye rolling thing, and then while HBK is too busy being distracted, the Miz, uh, you know, surprises HBK with the roll up or whatever it was, <laughs> like, the win, so obviously. DX didn't get the tag team titles back and then obviously HBK is like really angry and then Triple H goes to like kind of you know check on him and see if he's okay but HBK gets like really angry and like don't touch me and just like walks off and then after HBK walks off Seamus runs through the crowd and comes in and attacks Triple H and uh, you know he did like a one like kick on like the outside and then like so then Triple H is getting back to his feet and obviously Miz is preparing to do something and obviously you know the crowds are waiting to do something really interesting and he just does like another kick and then it's just like the audience just goes like flat it was like wow you could at least put him through the table or something but he just does like a kick and it's like what was that? <laughs> then Seamus gets up on the um, announce table and like starts like celebrating basically or you know taunting Triple H so obviously it's probably yeah, going to be Seamus versus Triple H at WrestleMania. Thankfully, it's not for the title, but still, it's going to happen, so that's, again, another match I couldn't really care less about. The rest of WrestleMania is looking pretty good. Like, um, I'm looking forward to um, Jericho and Edge. That should be a good match. Cena and Batista is a bit like, well, it could be good. It, it just depends, really. A lot of people are going to be like, oh, it's horrible, but it could be all right. Undertaker and Shawn Michaels, I'm really looking forward to it. I honestly don't know who to say who I think is going to win. I can't actually pick, because obviously... Undertaker, you know, he has his WrestleMania streak, and obviously a lot of people say, well, you know, oh, the streak won't ever be broken. But then, and then some people are saying, yes, well, HBK is supposed to be, you know, you know, not wrestling anymore. They've heard rumours that he's like given up because, you know, he's gotten too much for him or whatever. So, you know, people could think, well, well Undertaker's going to win with that. But then on the other hand, you know, they're really, really building this up. Like, is HBK like really trying to like get this match to really see who's the better of the two of them and then for him to like lose again it's a bit like ugh like if he did lose and I don't think anyone else I think if someone well I don't know like a lot of people are like obviously I, I'm part of this like wrestling forum so I kind of read what like everyone thinks on there and they're saying that oh it should be like Kane who breaks the streak and I really don't think so because for Kane I mean fair enough when he was actually decent not be funny but he's really not like <laughs> that good anymore so if it was to be Kane to break the streak that would be pretty like terrible at least HBK you know they can pull off a good match, but the only thing I'm thinking is I don't know, really don't think they're going to be able to top last year's match. I could be completely wrong, but it's just the way they built up everything last year, like, you know, with, like, the entrances, like, all the effort and all that they put into that again. Surely they're not going to, like, do it again, 
or just make it, you know, because well, when I was watching it last year, I was just like, whoa, this is like, you know, incredible. So I don't actually know if they're going to be able to top that. They could do, but I think they're building up the feud a lot better this time, because last time they didn't really, I don't think they gave it that much time. But this time, obviously, you know, they've been building up since, like, December, and then there was a really awesome video package that they did last week, and, yeah, they just, I think it's been a lot better build up. I'm seriously rambling, I apologise. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm kind of, yeah, talked about, like, Raw, like, a bit, and then, like, kind of digressed into, like, everything else and talking about it. But, no, I'm actually looking forward to WrestleMania. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, it's going to be horrible, but... But then a lot of people said that last year's WrestleMania was horrible and I really liked it, so each to their own, really. But seriously, I'm just going to stop talking now because I've been talking far too long. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!